Electric at Berkeley, we're made up of over 40 plus majors with 160 plus members that participate in the FSAE EV competition. My name is Carolyn and I am the manufacturing lead for Formula Electric at Berkeley. Hi, my name is uh, Toshko. I'm the president of Formula Electric at Berkeley. Throughout the year, we're working on designing, building, manufacturing, and testing uh, this beautiful car back here to compete at Michigan. We got our car running for the first time on Saturday, just before competition, so less than a week ago, and only got 30 minutes of testing time before we had to pack it off and send it to Michigan. As we transitioned into the Friday of the week of competition, uh, we were really, our, our goal was just to pass inspection and be ready to um, drive in all of the dynamic events. Um, which is a step that we've never gotten to um, in the history of the club because it's so young and, and uh, this is our third car. Second time we've ever passed mechanical inspection and the first time we've ever passed our battery inspection, which has been just an amazing effort from all of our students here. Right now we're working on passing our uh, EV active test, which is basically turning on the car and making sure every single component works from that system before we go and take it out on the track. So we encountered a, a big issue with our CAN communication, and so we spent most of Friday um, trying to understand that problem and fix it. Uh, we also spent most of Friday night um, and, and into the early hours of the morning uh, back at the Airbnb trying to recreate that problem. And Basically recreate our car on the Airbnb dining table. One important thing about Formula Electric at Berkeley that has been my favorite part is that you really get the hands-on experience that takes the next step from what you learn in your classes to being able to apply this in industry. And that's where sponsorships become so critical. Fictive has been a great help for us, uh, not only with providing our parts, but also as a mentorship as well. And that was a huge help when we were such a new team. We didn't really know what we were doing. You know, on the DFM side, you know, even how to machine these complex, you know, multi-axis parts that, that we see here. You know, we've been working very closely with Samson and Valentina. Um, they're very instrumental in sort of building up that base of manufacturing knowledge for a lot of the new, newer members on the team. So you can see last year, um, we had, you know, a lot of material in these spots up here. Um, we had these lips that um, were just extra material adding weight with no need. And then we, we made all of these pocketing adjustments in here yep. and we're able to reduce weight by 20%. And so we spent a lot of time making these drawings and tolerancing everything once we sent it out. Um, and then I think on the call with Samson, they were able to really think critically about, okay, what tolerances actually matter? Right. How much do we care about, um, you know, this distance here or, or whatnot. And we, we had both the driving sprocket and, and the motor shaft uh, machined by Fictive. For this design to work well, uh, we needed really tight tolerances. Mm -hmm. So we were able to work together to make sure that they, the machinists knew that these were supposed to fit together. When we got the result from Fictive, we were amazed at how perfectly it fit. So last year, we machined our sprockets in in-house, so we didn't have proper splining. So that caused a lot of issues with our chain. So this year, we were able to get like perfect splining from Fictive. We worked with Fictive to create our battery structural bars, which sit inside of our battery casing and hold together all of the modules. We had material requirements that were really strict in order to make sure our battery was safe. The great thing with Fictive was we were able to propose different materials and we were able to optimize for a material that would fit our qualifications, hit our tolerances, and then also be able to ship on the timeline that we needed in order to build the car on time and get running. Saturday morning, we show up as a sort of last ditch effort. Friday night, there was uh, a battery fire near the inspection tent, and so there was a lot of chaos and it was quite hectic, and we actually didn't even know whether the judges would allow us to re-inspect for the uh, electrical active portion of the inspection. Um, but we, we gave it our all and we decided last ditch effort, let's go. So we get to competition at about 6.30 in the morning, first team there uh, working on our car and we're the first in line to get through the inspection again. And basically we get told you get one shot. And then one by one we just started banging through all of the check marks and getting them and little thing popped up here. We had to go solder a couple things on in, in a couple minutes. All of us are standing there just in complete and utter shock and just pure excitement. So do we not pass? We passed? We passed?
and for the first time in team history, we got through um, that that portion of, of the inspection, which was huge. Yes. 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 To see an EV active test not only go through inspections so quickly, but to be able to go through so smoothly when we've been having issues all week. And our team is just so excited to be there and working with each other. We have about three hours to pass all of these tests, which is a lot is a short amount of time for any FSA team, let alone the first time we ever go through this. And then next step was tilt, where they tilt your car to a 60 degree angle. You know, this is something that we've done in theory, but we've never been able to see in person and just to see our car slowly get tilted inch by inch. It's, it's going up on its side, it's going up on its side. We think it's gonna fall, but it doesn't fall. Everything works. Seeing it work, so excited. Even the volunteers at this rate have come in and joined us uh, in cheering us on. Next step, rain test. Two minutes of rain just pouring over the back of the car. We're super scared that something's gonna happen. You see all your hard work just get covered in water head to toe. And all of us are waiting there, counting down the time. And we turn it back off. And then we wait. Our electrical lead is clearing off a bit of the rain on the power plug. And then he turns it back on and then the light flashes. And they checked uh, to make sure that there's no faults and it's safe. We're all just cheering and excited to see the first time that we've ever really passed this test. So we have about 45 minutes to pass technical inspection at this point. And then the last one was brake test. We wheeled it over. Oh. To finally see our car run for the first time at competition is probably the most exciting moment in <laughs> our team's history. You drive your car up to 30 miles per hour and then you have to turn off your car and hit the brakes right away. And they need to see all four of your wheels lock up. Oh. So we see our uh, brake test run and... Unfortunately, there were a few um, issues related to that and ultimately our, our brakes um, weren't able to break. The underlying issues with that would have been solved with a bit more time, um, but because it was the last day and because we had about 20 minutes to the end of the inspection period, uh, we weren't able to fix that issue in time. That was our last step that we made it to at competition, but it was still so exciting to see our car run for the first time. I'm really proud of the huge effort that the entire team brought forth and how we were able to push to the very end um, and, and not give up and really go much further than uh, the team's ever gone before. It's been a huge step within Feb history to get to this point. I'll do one more. Hi, my name is Carolyn. I am was previously the manufacturing lead at Formula Electric at Berkeley, and I'm now going to be the chief mechanical engineer. We wanted to put in a week break, actually, uh, after the competition ended and just give people a break, but no one could stop talking on our communications online because we're all just so excited to work and see how we can improve and do better for next year. Um, I think the best quote that I can give is from um, one of the uh, head judges uh, in, in our design event um, and he said you guys are going to dominate next year um, and we're going to take that to heart and we're going to do everything we can to uh, to prove them right and, and show them that yeah we are going to dominate next year and we're going to come back hitting harder than ever before. <laughs>